Depressed fracture of the skull with extensive damage to the brain area. Two attempts at suicide during the first convalescent period. It's an interesting case. We knew, of course, that he was upset about the child. The parents were friends of his. He felt in some way responsible. But it wasn't his fault. It was an accident. His an injured brain isn't always logical, Mr. Graham. It may seem easier to take one's life than to go on living. Well, it's a most unsatisfactory case. From an insurance point of view. Oh, I'm as sympathetic as the next man. We can't go on paying out indefinitely. Is there still a qualifying disability or isn't there? That's what I have to determine. If the world's kind to him during the next few months, he'll be all right. If it isn't... A final breakdown. Insanity? And he'll probably commit suicide first. There's still that tendency. Any evidence of abnormality before the accident? None. He was an industrial chemist. Intelligent and quite sane. It's all right, you can put your things on. It was the claims manager himself, and he didn't bring a doctor. Oh. It's a good sign. They'll probably agree now. If your head bothers you during the next year or so, you can still claim. Well, it's very good of you to take so much trouble, Doctor, but I, I really want to forget the whole thing. Insurance companies like paying out. Any idea where you're going to live in London? Yes, um, Brocker's Common Hotel. It's near the works. What about your friends in Sheffield? Are you going to see them again? Yes, I suppose so, sometime. You know they never blamed you? No, but if I hadn't kept her out so late, she'd still be alive, wouldn't she? Apart from work, have you any idea what you want to do? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. I might get married. Anyone in view? <laughs> no. The view's been rather restricted lately, hasn't it? There's a piece of advice I ought to give you. About marriage? In a way. I wouldn't make any important decision for a time, if I were you about marriage or changing your job or anything else. 
You mean there's a good chance of a relapse? Well, not necessarily. If you came to me with a broken leg, I should say don't play football. That's sense, isn't it? Well, goodbye, Doctor. Thank you. Remember, you'll tire easily at first. Don't overdo it. Go to bed early and take it easy. Thanks, I will. And that's not just routine advice. When you've been in hospital a long time, the outside world seems strange and noisy. People will upset you at first. Try not to let them. All right, Doc. I remember. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mind what you're doing. Sorry. My name's Ackland. I believe there's a room booked for me. Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Ackland. Yes. Ackland. It's ready for you, I think. Thank you. Room number eight on the top floor. I'll show you. Right. Oh, dear, the book. Will you sign it, please? Such a nuisance, I always think. My last address? Yes, please. Oh, of course, your firm booked the room for you, didn't they? Yes. Lufton Hospital? You're a doctor, then? No, I've been a patient there. How long? About a year. I wonder if you'd show me to my room now. Oh, yes, of course. No, it's quite all right. I can manage. This is all your luggage. The rest of it's being sent on. That's the dining room back there, and this is the lounge. Oh, good evening, Miss Selby. Oh, good evening, Miss Heap. This is Mr. Ackland, Mr. Ackland, Miss Heap. How do you do? How do you do? I wonder, could we have a little more coal on the lounge fire? It's really getting a bit chilly. Yes, I, I'll, I'll take Mr. Ackland up to his room, and I'll get you some, Miss mm. Heap. You won't forget, will you? No, Miss Heap. Miss Heap always feels the cold, so. Oh, good evening, Mr. Peachy. Good evening. This is Mr. Ackland. Good evening. He's going in the room above you. He's a retired businessman. Very rich, I've heard. I think he likes it here because it's homey. Number seven's Miss Newman. She has a gramophone, and the noise comes through the wall sometimes. But if it bothers you, just knock on the wall, and she'll stop. And here's you. It used to be Mr. Leeper's room. He went to Australia. Oh. We're a bit near the trains, but after a time you don't notice them. If you let me know what time you'd like your bar, I'll reserve it for you. We like to have time, so there's no waiting. You look tired. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. An aspirin? No, thanks very much. Well, I'll... Leave you now. It's dinner time. Good. If there's anything you want, please do let me know. No, thanks very much. Thank you. and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night. Good Lord, deliver us. There. 
game end. They could have set us if Mr. Pope had led the Ace of Diamonds. Wisdom after the event. And before. Well, we'll see, eh, partner? You'll have to excuse me, I'm afraid, the accounts, you know. Oh, well, really, I have a lot to do all this. Mr. Ackland, I was looking for you after dinner, Mr. Ackland. I was unpacking. Let me see, Miss Heap, you met before dinner, I think. Yes. Miss Sally, Mrs. Vinton. Could we have some more coal on the fire? Yes, Miss Heap. Mrs. Vinton, Miss How Parsons, Mr. Pope. Do Mr. How do you do? How do you do? Do you play bridge? Well, I have. Couldn't have come at a better time. Just the man we need for a fourth. You and me against the ladies, eh? I'm agreeable. It's very kind of you, but I, I only came in for a book. Well, sure, you'll play one rubber. We have so few players here. Mr. Ackland is just out of hospital. He's been there a year. Dear. You will excuse me, won't you? What was the trouble? In turn. Oh. I had a fractured skull. Oh, I get headaches, I expect, don't you? What yes. you need is taking out of yourself. Yes, that's the idea. Cheer you up again, Wood. I expect Mr. Ackland's tired. Well, I was going to bed. With a book? Now, that is bad for you, reading in bed. Tie yourself out thoroughly first, then go to bed and sleep. That's what you need. Shall you just take Miss Selby's place, or shall we cut for partners? I'm sorry, I really would rather go to bed now. You won't play? That's very unsociable. I'm sorry, but not tonight, if you don't mind. Oh, well. Too bad. Another night, perhaps, eh? Yes, another night. These invalids. Self-pity, that's what it is, mostly. Pure selfishness. I think he heard what he did. I know his kind. I married one. Mr. Ackland? Yes? What time would you like to be called in the morning? 7.30, please. And would you like an early morning cup of tea? We charge sixpence a day extra for Yes, it. please. Are you all right, Mr. Ackland? Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night. Sure you're not cold? No, darling. I'm as warm as toast. Good. Hello there. Good evening, Mr. Wilcox. I'll see you next week, dear. Yes. Bye-bye, darling. Bye-bye, other thing. Who was that? Mr. Ackland, he arrived today, number eight. Oh, I say, dear, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't let you know I wouldn't be in for dinner. But you see, Mr. Wilcox was in town and wanted to see me, and I couldn't get to a telephone. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. But you see, he's trying to get me a job with kids, because you know the big wholesale people. Of course, it's lingerie, and you know I don't model underwear in the ordinary way, but, well, the money's good. Oh, any mail? Your bill, Miss Newman. Do please try and pay some of it. You know I'm only the manageress here. If people get behind with their bills, I get into trouble. I know, dear. And I'll pay it this week without fail, don't you worry. You've been very sweet about it, and I love you very much. But then you're June. June? Your horoscope. Oh, good-natured, easygoing, and generous to a fault. That's June. I'm June, too. I'll lend you my book. Will you really, Miss Newman? Thank you very much. Of course I will, dear. Remind me. Oh, Good evening, Miss Newman. Could you um, spare me a moment? What is it? Well, I couldn't help overhearing what Miss Selby was saying about your bill. Oh, couldn't you? And I only wanted to say that if you're needing any more money... No, thanks. Not any more. But you let me before. You used to be nice to me. Oh, I'm sorry if I... I said no thanks, and I'm going to pay you back every penny you've lent me. But I don't want you to do that. I don't suppose you do. Just the same I'm going to. Then you can leave me alone. Oh, Molly, that's not kind. Miss Selby, could we have some more coal on the fire? Yes, Miss Heath.
You don't know Harry Carden, do you? No. Oh, he's a nice chap. Capable, too. I think you'll like working with him. And he told me he'd be glad to have you, but don't let him work you to death. No, I, I won't. Oh, good morning, Harry. Morning. This is Ackland. Hello. How do you do? Look, Mr. Stebbins, when are you going to get us that new centrifuge? I'll see what we can do, Harry. Well, I'll leave you to it now. See you at lunch. Right here, thanks. I always ask him for something new when he comes in. Keeps him away. Well, it is nice to have you with us. I'm not just being polite. You've got a crack on the head in some road smash, I hear. Uh, yes. Where are you living? Brockhurst Common Hotel. Oh, I live just across the common. You must come and see us. Thanks, I'd like to. Uh, did Stevens tell you what we're doing? Yes. Synthetic starch, isn't it? Yes, that's one thing. And what we're really after is a whole series of... sugars, 15% more than the economic minimum. Mm -hmm. Now we'll have to wait and see what the board has to say. Think they'll let us go on? If they got any sense. What's time? 8.30. We're working too late. What do you do with yourself instead of coming to see us? I've asked you often enough. Well, I generally go to bed early and read. Weekends too? Oh, go for walks. Well, it certainly seems to agree with you. You're looking a lot better than you did three months ago. That was the hotel, I think. The first day or two there really got me down. Yes, it's a terrible dump. Oh, they tried to be kind, but I wanted to be left alone. You know, people scared me. I just wanted to run away and hide. Yeah, that's all over now. Yes. Yes, I think so. Well, then why don't you get out and see a few people now and then? Look, uh, my young sister's staying with us. Why don't you come to the spring dance of this next Saturday? Well, I... Uh... They rather like all the staff to come, you know. I suppose I really ought to. Of course you should. Come on, I'll drop you at the hotel. Right. Thanks for the ride. Right here. Sorry I made you miss a dinner. It's a pleasure to miss a meal here. Good night. Good night. Good evening, Miss Selby. Good evening, Mr. Acklin. No dinner again. I had a sandwich at the works. There's some mutton left. I could warm it up for you. Uh, no, thanks. It was quite a big sandwich. It wouldn't take a minute. No, thank you. Good night. Oh! Oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's you. Look, I was ironing. The wire started to smoke. There was a flash and all the lights went out. Oh. I think the fuse boxes are out here somewhere. My last match. You got a light? I've got a lighter here. My lights have gone out. Where's Miss Selby? It's all right, Miss Heap. It's only a fuse gone. Hold the light up a bit, will you? Here we are. I say, I'm terribly sorry. Can you mend it? Yes, I think so. Seems to be enough wire left. It'll uh, have to be fixed probably tomorrow, though. Here we are. That's better. You did switch the iron off, I suppose. No. Well, it may fuse the lights again. Well, I was frightened to touch it. Do you mind? Oh, all right. Oh, dear. I'm afraid everything's in a terrible muddle. What happened? You catch your foot in the flex? No, I didn't do anything. It just started smoking. Oh, let's have a look at it. Oh, that's that. It's burnt right through. You'll have to get a new connector. Oh, well, that means I can't finish my ironing. Afraid not. What you want is a drink. Well, it's, uh, it's very nice of you, but I think that oh, I really... Oh, come ought... on, don't be stuffy. I don't know what I should have done if you hadn't been there. Gin and lemon, I'm afraid it's all I got. Well, uh, thanks. I expect I'd have had Mr. Peachy up here breathing around trying to make passes at me. Mr. Peachy? Mm, the one with the face like a sheep. <laughs> yes, I know him, but... Uh... Oh, you'd be surprised. I should. Thanks. Sit down. Well, this is really very nice of you. Well, I was lonely. Besides, I'm grateful. I had to have the light on, too. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I mean for not complaining about the radio. The man who had your room before complained. Oh, I rather enjoyed. Oh? What month's your birthday? October, why? 
Well, that accounts for it. You're an October man. I'm June. Good-natured, easy-going, generous to a fault. Do you know your horoscope? Uh, no. Look, I'll show you. Ah, here we are. See, October. Yes, October sign Libra. That means the scales. Mm -hmm. October people are affable, suave, dapper, and have a sense of beauty. The October people love gaiety, friends, and all the good things. Above all, they love life there. Affable, suave, and dapper, eh? Well, you love life, don't you? Well, isn't everybody? No, not everybody. Have another drink. Uh, no, thanks. Oh, well, uh, I will. Is this your job? Yes, I'm model. Oh, who for? Oh, hat people, dress people, advertising. You don't like it? Well, it's all right what there is of it, but... Well, I want to get married. Anyone in particular? Yes, only he's married already and she won't divorce him. So he says. He's a buyer for a firm in Birmingham. Oh, you're tired. I've just been working late. Thanks, uh, thanks very much for the drink. Well, I've always got some if you feel like a little chat. Now, you won't forget. Oh, thanks, I won't. Well, thanks again for doing the light, darling. I don't know what I should have done. Thank you. Warm-hearted and demonstrative, that's me. Well, that's, um, very nice. Good night. Bye-bye, darling. Jim, you're late. I'm sorry. Joyce, dear, this is Jim. Jim, my wife. How are you, Jim? How do you do? I'm going to call you Jim because I've heard Harry speak of you so often. Good. I think Jim is dancing. Well, shall we go back to the table? Right. We were beginning to think that you backed out at the last minute. No, oh, I've been looking forward to it. Good, that's fine. Evening, Eklund. Good evening. Nice to see you. I was just telling Miss Jenny here that the staff dance is the one occasion in the year when I can see your husband without getting asked for new equipment. Oh, sorry. Jenny, this is Jim Ackland. Jim, my sister Jenny. Hello. How do you do? You're the man who never comes to tea. Oh, you see what a reputation you've got. Yes, I shall have to try and correct that. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, will you dance? Yes. to be sitting here as if we were waiting up for them. Darling, you've said that every night for the past week. It's been a lovely evening. I like your hair like that. Do you? Same time tomorrow. Same time. Good night. Good night.
yes? Oh, hello. Hello. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, well, uh, come in. Been out a lot lately. I said to myself, he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I can't offer you a drink. Won't you sit down? Uh, no, I wanted to ask you a favor. Light gone wrong again? No, it's not that. Um, look, I've got three modeling jobs for Kitzkes, the wholesalers, next week, and they owe me for three others, but they don't pay till the end of the month. I've got to have some money. I'm in a jam. I hate asking you, but could you possibly lend me some? Yes, of course. How much do you need? Uh, 30 pounds. Uh, I could definitely pay you back at the end of the month when I get my checks in. Uh, 30 pounds, that's, that's rather a lot, isn't it? Have it back, I promise you. Oh, uh, oh, that's all right. Well, uh, I haven't got that much on me. When do you want it by? Well, now, as soon as possible. Oh. Look, I'm terribly sorry to bother you, but, well, I, I have to have it. Let's see. It's um, Saturday, isn't it? I could go to the bank on Monday morning, or Miss Selby could cash me a check tomorrow. Must you really have it before Monday? Look, I know it's awkward for you. I could get a check cashed. By Miss Selby? Oh, no, I wouldn't let her know. Oh, no, of course not. There we are. Well, it's terribly kind of you. I... I'll let you have it back faithfully. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. How's the man from Birmingham? I haven't seen him this week. Oh. I had a letter from him, though. It's a great life, isn't it? Is there anything else I can do to help apart from the money? Oh, no. No, no thanks, no. I, I think I'll go home soon. My mother and father live in Maidstone. And, well, maybe I could get my old job back. I was in Woolworths. Oh. Oh, I'm keeping you up. No, you're not. Well... Well, thanks again. I won't forget. Oh. Good night. Good night. What do Joyce and Harry think about me? Well, they like you. Do they mind my being with you so much? Of course they don't. Why? Oh, I just, just wondered. Harry thinks a lot of you. He says you've done most of the work on this process. Oh, nonsense. Did he, uh, tell you about that accident I had? Yes. Poor darling, it must have been dreadful. But that's all over now, isn't it? You're well again. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, well, but, uh... What, darling? There's, uh, something I never told Harry. What? It's my head. I'm not sure if it's right yet. But it must be now. I love you. You know that, don't you? And I want to ask you to marry me. But I can't until I know for certain that I'm all right. You see, they warn me that for a time there's a chance of a relapse. If that happens, I have to go back to hospital. That won't happen. The day I came here, I stopped by the bridge. An express came by and I wanted to fall in front of it. It's something in my mind, a sort of fear as if it's dangerous to stay alive. Because the child was killed? Yes. Yes, I suppose so. When the fear goes, the danger will go.
same time. Yes, sir, they're here. Right, sir. How do they know it was Miss Newman? How can they be sure? A bag. She just went out to post a letter. That's just what I can't get over. She just went out to post a letter, just like she always did on Sunday. It must have been a lunatic. She went out to Miss Newman's room with that plain clothes man. It's chilly here. I was so warm in bed. I think I should go back. They said we had to wait in here. That was a CID man, you know, the one in the Mac. It's all so sordid, the police and everything. We'd have had time to play a dozen hands by now. Rich with Miss Newman dead. It's Sunday, too. Well, it's Monday now. Besides, I think she was knocked down by a car. They say she was strangled from behind with a scarf or something. Poor little thing. She was always so full of life. Mr. Ackland's been rather a long time in there, hasn't he? Twenty-five minutes. I shouldn't have thought he had so much to tell them. He may have gone to bed. His coat's still there, and his scarf. Miss Newman went to post a letter. The box is just down the road. What was she doing in the middle of the common? She must have been dragged there. All the way to the middle of the common. Don't be silly. She must have gone there herself. With the murderer, you mean? With someone she knew. Some man. She had a boyfriend. Perhaps it was him. Yes, and perhaps it was someone from here. Oh, no. Well, let's see. Now, you were in, Mr. Pope. And you, Mr. Connor. Yes, yes. What about you, Mr. Peachy? Oh, I went for a walk. You saw me go. I got back just before it rained. That leaves Mr. Ackland. And that was the last time you saw her when you gave her this check? Yes, definitely. And you didn't see her while you were walking on the common? No. At least I don't think so. You're not sure? Well, I was thinking of something else. I don't remember seeing anyone in particular. Which way did you go? I've been trying to remember. You see, I... 
I didn't want to come straight back here, so I just walked on the common anywhere. In the rain? Well, it wasn't raining then. And where were you when the rain stopped? Near Brockhurst Avenue, I think. But I'm not sure. I, you see, I didn't keep to the roads. Hmm. You say you never met this married man she knew, the one from Birmingham? No. Did she ever mention his name? No. Miss Selby might know it, though. Well, we'll see. Well, I'll get you to make a written statement about all this, Mr. Ackland. Well, that's if you're prepared to, of course. Well, certainly. Perhaps tomorrow morning. Of course. You'll find me at the works. Oh, yes. Now, that's at... Uh, what is it? Excuse me, sir. Could you spare me a minute outside? Well, excuse me a moment. Yes. There it is, you see, sir. J.K. Ackland. Last address, Lufton Hospital. Yes? I've been on to the hospital to check. Didn't they know him? Oh, yes, they know him. He was in for a bad head injury. Road accident. Well? They said he wasn't quite right in the head for a time. Seems all right. Yes, sir, but uh, they always do, don't they? All right. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Ackland. Oh, that's all right. You wanted my business address. Yes. But I think, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to make your written statement tonight, after all. I should have thought that you, being an insurance agent, would have had some sense of your responsibilities, Mr. Pope. Don't let's go over all that again, Mrs. V. If the police ask me questions, I'll answer them. But I'm not going to put ideas in their heads. The police should have the facts. Yes. And the only fact we know is that he was out when the murder was done. So were lots of other people. I bet he scarcely knew her. On the same landing? Well say good morning to, yes. I knew her that much. Mr. Peachy knew her. Yes, I've seen him talking to her on the stairs. You see, he doesn't prove anything. No one's going to tell me that a girl like her and a man like him on the same landing scarcely knew each other. You're talking about the dead. He's not dead. She wasn't his type. Well, perhaps I should say several times he was in her room at night. When? Oh, several times, often. How do you know? My room is just below. You must tell the police immediately. If they ask. It doesn't prove anything. No, it doesn't. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Why not? Well, one doesn't like to... No, that's what I say. If you don't tell them, I shall. Men. Always saying you're so strong and masterful. When it comes to it, you're babies. Just babies. Ah. Uh. You've been a long time. Yes. Miss Selby's in there now. Good night, Miss Rackham. Good night. Good night. Will they want us? I really don't know. Good night, everybody. Well, Mr. Newman, I don't think I can keep you any longer. The inquest is tomorrow. <laughs> Evidence of identification from you. <laughs> And then we'll ask for an adjournment. Anything that'll help to catch that fiend. We'll do our best, Mrs. Newman. <laughs> this way, sir. Family? Yes, sir. Nothing. The district superintendent's in your office. All right. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. That's all right. Did you see the doctor? Yes, sir. Not very helpful at first. Did he admit the possibility? After a bit, sir, but he didn't like it. Mm. I've got a statement. He practically admitted in the end that the fellow was only convalescent when he left the hospital. Apparently, they couldn't do anything more for him. What sort of a chap is this, Ackland? Good manner, impress a jury. He'd be fairly safe on an insanity plea. Safer if he hadn't lied about his relationship with a girl, though. What about Peachy? Is he going to make a good witness? Oh, yes, sir. A respectable, quiet type. Oh, and we've traced the Birmingham man, sir. Name of Wilcox. Birmingham checked up on him. He was in a local conservative club until 10, so that washes him out. He has to come up today on business. I told him to look in tomorrow before he leaves. Scared stiff his wife will find out. What are you doing about Ackland? I'll have another go at him, sir. He may decide to be sensible. And there's this other girl he was out with. Should be a line there. You're quite sure he is the man? Well, sir, his check was found by the body. There's definite evidence he knew her better than he admits. He was on the common when she was killed, but says he doesn't know whether he saw her or not. It used to be a mental case, recently. I think it's disgraceful. Nobody's safe with a man like that about. No, indeed. A man like what, Mrs. Vinton? A man like... like the man who murdered Miss Newman. The 
police will find him. The police. They invite the cooperation of the public, and when you go there and try to help them, all you get is rudeness. Oh, well, I expect they're pretty fed up with listening to gossip. Well, I certainly don't consider it gossip to... Oh, hello. Good evening. Excuse me. I shan't be in to dinner this evening, Miss Selby. Very well, Mr. Eckert. Can I have those flowers I left? Oh, yes. Here they are. I'm afraid I forgot to put them into water, but I That's just haven't right. had a Thank moment. Thank you. Flowers. Ah, Mr. Ackland, I wonder if you could spare us a few minutes. There are just one or two points we'd like to straighten out. What points? What we'd really like is a more detailed statement from you. But I've told you everything I know. If you don't mind, Mr. Ackland. Won't tomorrow do? I think it'd be better if we could settle it up now. All right, you'd better come inside. Oh, there's no need to bother the hotel people. If you'd like to come back to my office, it'll really save time. Just as you like. I have to make a phone call first, though. Oh, you can do that from the office, too. Now, Mr. Acklin left me at my brother's house. The time was about 10.30 p.m. He did not say he was going back to the hotel, but I assume that he was. I know of no appointment he may have had. I did not see him again that night. Now, if you'll just read that through yourself, Miss Garden, and if it's correct, sign it. Look, what is the point of all these questions? Just a routine inquiry, sir. But this about his being normal or abnormal, that's not routine. I just want to get everything straight, sir. Yes, I suppose it was silly of me to ask. You are. Thank you, miss. Does Mr. Ackland know you're making these inquiries? I don't really know, miss. There's no harm in your telling him, of course. I should tell him anyway, whether there was harm or not. Well, I'll be going. Thank you very much, miss. Sorry to have disturbed you. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Good night, miss. We had to do our duty, you know, sir. Yes, but you mustn't expect people to enjoy it. Good night. Good night, sir. Hello. Oh, hello, Jim, yes. Oh. Yes, all right. I'll tell her. I'll see you later. That was Jim. He'll be a little late. The police want him to make another statement about this girl. He's at the police station now. But why, Jim? What's he got to do with it? Do they think he murdered her? Don't be silly, darling. They have to do all they can to find out who did it. But why, Jim? What can he know about it? It's ridiculous. Of course. Jim talked about it today. The girl lived at his hotel. She borrowed some money from him. He gave her a check. It was found near the body. After he left you last night, he didn't go straight home. He says he went for a walk on the common, but can't remember much about it. Harry. Those are the facts. The police deal, in fact. Oh, excuse me. Um, is there anybody... Yes. Miss Selby. Can I help? Oh, I don't know if you remember me. My name is Wilcox. I was a friend of Miss Newman's. Yes, I remember. I only heard about the tragedy today. Oh. It was a great shock. I was in Birmingham. I came up as soon as I heard. It was a great shock to all of us. Yes. Poor little Molly. I'd like to get my hands on the swine who did it. We were hoping to be married, you know. Oh, dear. I am sorry. I expect you would like to see her parents. Well, no, I wouldn't want to intrude just now. They were here this afternoon. I think they're staying at the Crown. Oh, I'm staying there myself, so I'll probably be seeing them. What I really came for, Miss Selby, what I really wanted to ask you was if I might sit quietly in her room for a while. Well... well I know it's sentimental of me, but, well, we were very close to each other. You can understand that, I know. I'll get the key. I don't suppose there's any harm in it. Her parents have taken away most of her things, except the gramophone. Things don't matter now, Miss Selby. Oh, no. Of course not. It's room number seven on that side. I'll show you. No, no. Don't you bother. I can find it.
What are you doing here? Hello, man. Is it any of your business? No, I'm not the police. I'll call them. Now, no, look here, man. There's no need for that sort of talk. Uh, besides, I, uh, I have Miss Selby's permission to be here. Have you got permission to take anything out of the room? Well, these letters are my property. I, I wrote them, and legally, that makes them my property. They might be evidence. Well, no, there's nothing to them. They're just friendly. You see, Miss Newman was a friend of mine. But, uh, well, if they got into the wrong hands, you know. What hands? Well, I mean, you're a man of the world, the, the wife. You know how it is. I always ask Miss Newman to burn them, but well, you know what women are about letters. Sentimental. She told me she'd get them pinned up behind the curtains. For safety. You see? Yes. Women can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes, can't they? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Amanda, I think you've got something there, eh? Oh, by the way, what about her letters to you? Oh, always put them on the fire. No use asking for trouble. No, what about the letter she posted last night? What letter? When she went out last night, she was going to the post box. She may have posted that letter before she was killed. Supposing it was to you. She always wrote on Sundays. But that wouldn't be evidence, that letter, would it? The police might think so. Have you seen them? Tomorrow morning. This is going to be awkward. Well, they're bound to bring it out at the inquest. You know, it's quite harmless. It's also unfair. Do you know what I should do if I were in your position, Mr. Wilcox? What? When you get back, put it on the fire with the rest. Unopened. That's the best way. Yes. I mean, it's not as though she'd say anything they could possibly use to find this lunatic. No. You'd only involve yourself. Mm. Anyway, the police already know who did it. They know him? Well, who is it? Well, they haven't actually arrested him yet, but it's only a matter of hours, I gather. Let's go downstairs, Matt. Jenny? Darling, won't you have something to eat now? No, thanks. I'll wait and have dinner with Jim. Would you like Harry to phone the hotel again? Hello. Oh, hello, Jim, dear. Where are you? Aren't you coming here? Yes, darling, of course I want to see you. Darling, I don't understand. I want to see you. All right. At the corner. But Jim... Jenny, what is it? Jim, you won't come here. I'm going to meet him. But, darling... Jenny, you're not to go out. Please, Jenny. Jim can look after himself. He mustn't get mixed up in all this. Besides, it may be dangerous. You do think he did it, don't you? Well, it's possible, yes. Be reasonable, Jenny. You could wait until the whole thing's cleared up before you see him. It'll only be a day or two. Don't wait up for me. I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't mean to sound like that on the phone. I know. The police were at our house this evening. They wanted to know what time you left me last night. Is it bad? They think I killed her. Jim. They don't say that, of course, but they keep asking the same questions in different ways. How many times have I seen Miss Newman? How often have I spoken to her? How many times she's spoken to me? How, when, why, what for? But it's all right now. I don't know, I don't know. I get confused. I've been wondering. Perhaps I did kill her and don't remember. That's not possible. It might be, with me. What does Harry think? 
Well, he doesn't like police asking questions. Does he think I did it? It doesn't matter what Harry thinks. It does a bit, you know. Harry's a very reasonable person, and if he's not quite sure... The important thing is that you didn't do it, and they're bound to find the person who did. Not if they're just trying to prove it was me. But they can't do that. Can't they? Do you know Mrs. Ackland? Her husband's a successful murderer. Perhaps they can't hang me, but they can make me wish they could. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I try to be reasonable, and I, I get tired, and I, I can't hold on anymore. You've got to, darling. Now, let's think. She went to post a letter. So it... What was she like? Pretty. A little pathetic boyfriend in Birmingham. Couldn't it have been him? No. Yeah. He was in Birmingham. A man named Wilcox. The police checked. Jenny. What is it? What do you want? It's getting late. Hello, Jim. Hello. I'm going to walk back to the hotel with Jim. No, darling. Harry's quite right. You'd have to walk back across the common. And it isn't safe. Shall I see you tomorrow? It isn't what Harry wants. It's what you want. I'll call for you at the hotel at 8 o'clock. You do understand, don't you, Jim? Until this business is cleared up. Yes, I understand. I won't see her. I'll give you a letter for her in the morning. Good night. Jim, I don't want you to think that I... Oh, excuse me. Is your name Ackland? Uh, yes, hi. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like a word with you. Well, uh, who is it? What do you want? <coughs> you dirty tyke. What's up? What's happened? Hurt yourself? No, I'm all right. Can you manage? Yes, thanks. What did you do? Trip over? I'm quite all right, thanks. What is it? What's the matter? He tripped over in the drive. Are you all right, Mr. Ackland? Uh, yes, thanks. Look, you'd better put some iodine on those cuts. I've got some in my room. I'll get it for you. Oh, uh, thanks. What is it? What's happened? I don't know. I just found him lying outside in the drive. But I saw that Chet Wilcox drive off as I was coming along the road. But he went half an hour ago. He must have waited outside. After what they were telling him in there earlier, I... I'd better get that iodine. Is it bad? No, Mr. Graves. Shakes you up, though, doesn't it? Here, let me give you a hand. Why don't you take your coat off and sit down? Thanks. No, it isn't bad. Did you, uh, see a man drive away in a car just as you came along? Mr. Wilcox, you mean? Well, that's who it was. I'm going to put some iodine on. Hold tight. Thanks. I didn't really trip over, you know. Your Mr. Wilcox knocked me down. With his car? No, with his fists. Oh. I think it'll be all right now. Thanks. I really am grateful. Do you know this Wilcox? No, I just met him here this evening. Shall I leave the iodine? No, you might want some more. Be all right. He seemed to be a little bit uh, upset. The police, probably. Well, he's going to see them tomorrow. Oh. So the police aren't the only ones who think I'm a murderer. Is that it, Mr. Pope? Well, I'll be going. Look, Mr. Ackland, I don't like murder any more than anybody else. But you may as well know what you're up against. 
I'm not mentioning any names, but there's one party in this hotel who's definitely been to the police and everybody else with a lot of stuff that's three parts lies and the rest hearsay. That's all. Mrs. Vinton? I've said I'm not mentioning any names. Just so long as you know. Good night. Thanks. Good night. She went to post a letter. I'm not sure how long I should be gone, but I have some important business. Yes, of course. When were you thinking of going? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. In any case, I suppose I should be wanted for the adjourned inquest. Oh, dear, yes, how tiresome. I do hope all this unpleasantness hasn't Excuse made you... Excuse me. Feel... Miss Sylvia, there was a Mr. Wilcox here earlier this evening. Do you remember him? Yes, I, I think I do. Yes. Do you um, happen to know where he's staying? It's, it's rather important. Well, no, I, I, I don't think... I... It's important, Miss Sylvia. Try to remember. Well, he did say something about the crown, I think. The crown, but... thank you. Of course, my doctor's the best man in Birmingham. But I told him, ulcer or no ulcer, I've got my job to do. What have you done to your hand? Oh, I knocked it. He said I'm the nervous, sensitive type. I suppose I am in a way. Splash. Uh, water, please. No. When you've got a lot of brain work to do and you're virtually in despair. It's all right, you needn't worry. I just want a word with you. What about? This is the residence bar, you know. Well, we can go somewhere else if you like. <laughs> Sit down. Well? You must have left Birmingham early this morning. I suppose you wouldn't have had time to receive a letter posted from here last night. What's the idea? When your friend Miss Newman was murdered, she'd gone out to post a letter. I think that letter was to you. Why me? Could have been to anyone. But most likely to you. She borrowed money from me on Saturday night. She seemed to be in some sort of trouble. She might have said something about it in her letter. She couldn't phone you because of your wife. Are you trying to kid me? Borrowed money? What do you think I am? I face the living daylights out of you and it'll be like kicking a dead man. Now, get out. Uh, yes? You want another? Do you? <laughs> no, thank you. Now, how friendly am I supposed to be with Miss Newman? Friendly? You ought to know you're in her room every night. Is that what you were told at the hotel? Well, isn't that enough? Yes, it's enough. Now, listen, Wilcox. This is advice. If you do get that letter, don't lose it. Give it to the police. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Vincent. Morning. Good morning. They've forgotten to put the marmalade out again. I'd like a word with you, Mrs. Vinton. Oh? Will you pour out or shall I? Well, time I was Just off. a minute, Mr. Pope. I'd like everybody to hear what I have to say to Mrs. Vinton. Uh, will you pass your cup, dear? Lying to the police when there's been a murder committed is a very serious offence. You can be sent to prison for it. Mr. Pope, are you going to allow this man to insult me or do I have to send for Miss Selby? Yes, Mr. Pope on. and Miss Selby can't alter the fact that you've been making false statements. I've done my duty as a citizen. By lying? I haven't lied. Everyone will bear me out. I only said what everybody thought. Nobody cares a rap about me. <laughs> what did you mean by telling the police that I was in Miss Newman's room every night? That wasn't her. That was Mr. Peachy. Mr. Peachy? Is that right, Pope? Well, yes, I think it was. Of course it was. And it's the truth. He had the room below. Oh, I've never been so insulted in my life. <laughs> Sylvie, is Mr. Peachy in? No, he's gone into town on business. At least, I, I think so. All right, thank you. 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Vinton, but I wanted the truth. Good well. These are up to date. Thanks. Uh, Jim, I've been trying to speak to you all day to apologize. Mm, what for? Losing my head last night and behaving so absurdly. Oh, that's all right. You can't be too careful. Yes, but... Uh... It looks a bit different in the daylight, is that it? Oh, um... That's for Jenny about tonight. Well, uh... Go on, take it. I'm leaving early, if you don't mind. I've got to see the police. No. Nope. I'm seeing them this time. From what was said by Miss Parsons and Mr. Pope, I concluded that my relationship with Miss Newman had been grossly misrepresented to the police. I repeat, I was in her room on only one occasion when the lights fused. She came to my room on only one occasion, and that was to borrow the money. I see. Is that all, Mr. Ackland? Yes, that's all. I'll sign it. Well, I imagine that clears the air a good deal, Inspector. When did you decide to make this statement? As soon as I'd heard what had been said. I see. As soon as you discovered the existence of Mr. Peachy's statement. Yes, that's right. Oh, I see. You mean that when I found I'd been caught out in a lie, I came along here to discredit Peachy, is that it? Is there any reason that you know of why Mr. Peachy should make a false statement? I've already told you, no. He must have been mistaken, that's all. The other guests in the hotel don't seem to think it likely that he what would What the be. other guests think isn't evidence. But then neither is this, Mr. Acton. But the letter she wrote is evidence. Certainly. And we haven't overlooked it. It was probably addressed to Wilcox. Probably. Have you any idea how your check came to be just by her when she was found? It, um, must have fallen out of her handbag in the struggle. Was there a struggle? I imagine there usually is when somebody's strangled. The check was screwed up into a ball. If it had just slipped out of a handbag, it would be flat, wouldn't it? Why don't you ask me if I murdered her? Oh, I don't know. Should I? It might save time. That would depend on your reply, wouldn't it? Shall we forget this and start again? We have a pretty clear idea about the person we want. We think he's a man with mental trouble in the background. A paranoiac. Believing that the world is against him. That people are lying about him. Someone not quite responsible for his actions at times. We think he got tired of this girl because another girl came along. We think that Molly Newman tried to blackmail him. And that in a fit of rage he killed her. That's not true. Most people would hang for it, but not this man. Not with his mental history. They'd call it an uncontrollable impulse. There'd be a verdict of guilty, but insane. No fuss. Quiet, proper medical treatment. What do you say, old chap? One more statement. A real one this time. I didn't do it, you know. I just... Uh... Across the common. I was walking. Yeah? I didn't do it. I didn't do it, Inspector. It's fantastic. I couldn't have done it. Could I?
key. Is Mr. Peachy in? Yes. I heard your knock. I didn't answer because I didn't want to be disturbed. There's something important I want to ask you. Well? Why did you lie to the police about Miss Newman and me? Shut the door, will you please? I'd rather these wild accusations weren't heard by anybody else. They might be taken seriously. Supposing you take this one seriously? I don't like your tone. Do you think you've been lied about? Why don't you go to the police? I have been. Oh? Didn't they believe you? You haven't answered my question. Why did you lie? I told the truth. You were in her room, and she was in yours, often. That's not the truth. One night I saw you kissing on the landing. Is that not true? Well, yes, but that was not you the way... You asked for answers, you better listen. You gave her money too, didn't you? Thirty pounds. How do you know that? Miss Newman showed me the cheque. When? Just before I killed her. You stay where you are. I don't want anyone else to hear us. No. No witnesses. I think I'd like you to hear. I think a condemned man should always know why he is condemned. You're insane. I have my pride, Mr. Ackland. Before you came here, Miss Newman liked me. She was a nervous girl always, but she liked me. And I liked her. Why else do you think I stayed in this middle-class filth? I could buy the place up ten times. You must have known her before you came here, then. Previous acquaintance? Oh, no. No evidence of that kind, either. I saw her one day in the street. I followed her here. She didn't know my real name, of course. Neither do you. But she was beautiful to me. She was always in need of money, and I gave her money. Gave it to her. Understand? Yes, yes, I... I understand. Then you came here. Everything began to change. You made her hate me. How did you feel about Wilcox? She never got any money from Wilcox. She wouldn't have dared ask him. He didn't know about Molly and me. You, the pair of you up there sniggering about me, paying me off. I threw the check in her face. So that's how it was? Yes. That's how it was. I threw the check in her face. That scared her. Then she started to run and I... I always liked her in that scarf. It was soft and pretty. I took it away as a memento. Oh, no. I burned it afterwards. It wouldn't have been safe to keep it. So now there's no evidence at all against me, none. She said nothing about me in her letters to Wilcox. Nothing. Now there's only you. First her. And now you. I shan't stay in London again. It's been very lonely. Need somewhere new. Somewhere in the sun. No, there's nothing you can do. The police didn't believe you before. They won't believe you now. There's no evidence. No proof. Nothing.
What are you doing here? Didn't Harry give you my note? You should have known that wouldn't have stopped me. Move over. What's the matter? I'm going to the police. Well, what's happened? But he had a poker in his hand. He's quite obviously crazy. I see. And you think we ought to detain Mr. Peachy for questioning, is that it? I don't know what the formula is, but he told me he's killed her and he's clearing out. He's already packed. This is supposed to be a free country. It's not yet a criminal offence to leave your hotel. But this man's confessed he did it, Inspector. Were you present at the interview, Miss Carton? No, but... Then I'm afraid I can't ask you to make any statement about it. Mr. Peachy is going to Scotland. He will be staying in Glasgow until the 10th, when he returns here for the adjourned inquest. He telephoned this afternoon to tell me. Glasgow? I don't believe it. He has a room booked at the Midland Hotel there. I still don't believe it. And neither would you if you'd heard what I heard. He's going away, all right, but not to Glasgow. Mr. Ackland, you've been under a great strain these last few days. Mental trouble can play tricks with people. Leave my mental state out of this. I've given you some information. Are you going to act on it or aren't you? You've given me no information. You've made some accusations. I've taken note of them. What's the matter? I'll walk from here. Jim! What are you going to do? I'm going back to the hospital tomorrow. No, darling, no, you can't do that. You can't give in. You said that when the fear went, the danger would go. But the fear has come back again. And this time it won't go away. But don't you see, this time you're not alone. It's both of us. I've got to go back to the hospital, Jenny. Then you'd always be afraid, always. Because you'd given in. But you don't know what these things are like. A child without a head and I'm the executioner. A strangled girl and I'm the murderer. The wheels of Jim. You're not the murderer. And you know who is, and you've got to stop him. It wouldn't be any use. Maybe not, but it'd be something. You'd still be trying. Oh, darling, don't give up. Don't give up, please. What more can I do? You can stop Peachy. I'm tired, Jenny. Oh, darling. You can't give in now. All right. Better get your coat on. District Superintendent CID, please. Uh, and tell them outside if anything comes through from Birmingham, I want to see it immediately. Hello? Godby here, sir. It's about Ackland. I think it's time we had him inside. You wait here. Are you going out? I won't be intimidated. We can't spend all our time cooped up in here. Besides, everybody's out and we can't find a fourth. So we're going to the pictures. Oh, do be careful. Where is he? Upstairs. Oh. Well, anyway, I can take care of myself. We shan't go across the common, though. Which is Mr. Peachy's room? Number three, but he left this afternoon. Left? Yes, he had to catch a night train to Scotland. He... He's gone. Yes. British European Airways label. It might be an old one. I don't think so. European Airways. He said he was going somewhere in the sun. Couldn't you phone up the airline and find out if he's got a booking? He won't be travelling in the name of Peachy. But if we can find his real name, prove he hasn't gone to Scotland... 
There's something we can try. Come on. Rockhurst Common Hotel. When Mr. Peachy left, how did he go? How? Yes, how? Did he have a taxi or what? Now, don't get flustered, Miss Sylvie. He had a car, one of those from the station. Did he go to the station? Well, he had his luggage. Come on, let's try the station. So I suppose he was going to the station. Yes, Miss Heap, you want some more coal. I'll just finish this typing. Good evening. Is Mr. Ackland in? Oh, no, he went out a minute ago. Do you know where to, Miss Selby? He said something about the station. Thank you. Yes? How many people bought tickets here during the last hour? Must have been about ten or a dozen, I suppose. Do you happen to remember a short... Let me see. Of course, that's not generally a very busy yeah. track. Do you happen to remember a short, dark, middle-aged man with glasses? He had some luggage with him. I don't know about luggage. I can't see from here, you see. No, but I think you... Of course, there's lots of middle-aged men with glasses, aren't there? Yes. What is he, a friend of yours? Yes. Hey, Bert, did you see a middle-aged chap with luggage on the 840? He wore glasses. Yes, there was. A short, plumpish chap. That's it. Where'd he go? Well, London, I suppose. That's where the 840 goes. Paddington. When's the next? Five minutes. Thanks. Two tickets to Pennington, please. Single or return? Single. Excuse please. me, Mr. Ackland. Well, what do you want? I'm afraid I have to ask you to come with me to the station. We propose to detain you for questioning in connection with the murder of Millicent Dorothy. Ian, stop him! Yes, sir. Yes, Listen. Did you see him go right across? No. He could have doubled back. We'd better put a call out for him, quick. You get out on the road. He's got away. Not for long, Miss Garden. There'll be a call out for him now. Where's the phone? What can I do for you? I want a car to go to Paddington. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I've got no driver's in just now. Oh. Well, couldn't I drive myself? Oh, no. Insurance. It's urgent. Could you take me? Well, I've got a job to finish on a back axle there by the first thing tomorrow morning. Look, double fare. I've got to go right away. What time is your train, sir? Uh, it isn't a train. I've got to meet somebody. Won't she wait? <laughs> no, no. She, she says she'll break our engagement if I'm late. Yeah. My wife used to be like that. Paddington, you see? That's right, yes. Well, the 8.40 from Rockhurst Common came in ten minutes ago. On time for a change. <laughs> At the front on the right. Well, uh, you happen to remember a short, middle-aged man with uh, a lot of luggage? Well, most of them have. Travelling, you know. At the front on the right. Yes, but this luggage had white bands and a lot of labels on it. Ooh, we've been to a lot of places, eh? At the front on the right. Now, I don't know. Why don't you ask a porter? Thanks. Uh, must have a platform to keep it. Go on. There's the machine. Mind your business. Uh, Joe? Yeah? Wasn't much hand luggage on the last in from Brockers Common? Not much. Why? I'd better ask him, sir. Thanks. Look, I'm trying to find a friend of mine. Came up on the 840. He had uh, luggage with white bands and a lot of labels on it. Mm, not me. I was a wicker basket, a bike, and a crate of chicks. What do you look like? Oh, uh, middle-aged, glasses, not very tall. What was he wearing? Don't know. Mm. Sorry, you better ask one of the other boys. Hey, Bert, did you handle a lot of luggage with white bands on the 840? Yes, why? Looking for a friend of his. Where'd he go? Search me. Put his bags in the left luggage and that was the last I saw of him. Where's the left luggage office? Over, Over there, there, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. D 
ticket, please. I haven't got a ticket. I wanted to ask about some luggage left here about ten minutes ago by a friend of mine. Oh, well, perhaps you'd better require another counter, sir. No, thanks. I wanted to ask about some luggage left here about ten minutes ago by a friend of mine. Other counter, sir? The other counter just sent me here. Oh, you only take luggage in here, But sir. I don't want to take it out. I just want to look at the labels. Look at the labels? Yes, it's very important. Just a moment, sir. But couldn't I just come round and have a look? Sorry, sir. Against the rules. But it's urgent. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What's the trouble? Wants to look at somebody's luggage. Hasn't got the ticket. Oh, well, you know, sir. You see, officer, I missed a friend of mine I was meeting, and I thought perhaps the name of his hotel might be on his luggage. Oh. I've really got to see him. It's, it's vitally important. His wife's been taken seriously ill. Oh, well, in that case, you'd better come round this way. Thank you. I'll talk to the clerk in charge. Brown overcoat, blue scarf. Ackland's the name. Got it? Yes, Sergeant. And watch your step if you do see him. He's already run for it once tonight. Yes, Sergeant. Is this it, sir? No, not enough labels on it. Becky. There's a general call for a man named Ackland. Wanted for questioning, murder. Clean shaven, medium height, thick set, brown overcoat. Blue scarf. Brown overcoat. Blue scarf. Yes. But there's a chap like that in here now, sir. Where? Just round the other side. I thought you said five minutes. Sorry. Did you meet her? No. Oh, my fault was missed me. He hired a black Austin saloon from the garage and went to Paddington. Good. Circulate that and keep a man at the garage. You're treating him like a criminal. He's behaving like one, Miss Carden. Come on, Jenny. Hello? Ackland? Yes, put him through. Yes, Ackland? Where are you? Never mind where I am. Now listen. Peach is leaving the country by air tonight. Flight number B stroke 324 to Lisbon. I see. Yes, I've got it. Where are you? What does he say? Let me speak to him. Yes, yes, of course I'm going to do something. But where are you now, Eklund? What difference does it make where I am? You've got under an hour to get Peachy, either at Paddington when he picks up his luggage or at Northolt. But you haven't enough evidence to extradite him. If he gets out of the country, you've lost him. Yes, I realize all that. But don't worry, we'll look after it. In the meantime, why don't you be a reasonable chap and come back here? What for? But I've answered all your questions. Well, you wouldn't listen to me. I had to get proof. What else could I do but run? But there's no point in my coming to your office now. You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe a word of it. You still think I'm a lunatic trying to save my own skin. No, I won't. No. Now, look here, Inspector. Please, Mr. Carton. Get on to North Holt. Give them a description of Peachy. He may be on the Lisbon plane under the name of Hatfield. If he is there to delay him. We're not fools, Miss Carton. Give us a statement we can check and we'll check it. Teleprint from Birmingham, sir. It's the letter the girl wrote on Sunday. A man named Peachy. in the Midlands. I've got to go back there. Well, you're not going there this lot. I only did Paddington as a favour. Well, you want to go back to Brockhurst, don't you? All right. I'll go back. Attention, please. Will all passengers for Lisbon Please report to the embarkation desk immediately.
This Portuguese visa isn't quite in order, Mr. Hatfield. The date's rather indistinct. The, the travel bureau got it for me. I dare say we can straighten it out if you don't mind waiting a minute. Just a moment, Mr. Peachy. Changed your mind about Glasgow? I see. Thanks. He got out at the corner of Brockhurst Avenue and London Road. The driver said he was talking about going to Lufton Hospital. We've got to do something. Well, wait a minute, darling. He's all right. He's probably gone back to the hotel. No, he won't do that. He doesn't know what's happened. I'm going to find him. I could send the patrol car to find him, sir. I think you've done enough. I think we both have. He won't be here. Well, where else can he be? We've been all over the common. Anyway, I'll have another talk with Miss uh, What's her name? Selby. She might have some idea. Worth trying, anyhow. Jim. 